This is Pastor Richard from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Minot, North Dakota. I have a question for you this Holy Week, a question that I have posed to Bible study classes in the past, and that is this question, who is the world's greatest sinner? Who is the most vilest of sinners the world has ever known? Now, in response to this question, I often receive answers such as perhaps bin Laden or Saddam Hussein. Typically, Hitler is thrown into that mix, or perhaps maybe a mass murderer who has done horrific crimes against humanity. However, individuals are surprised, and you may be surprised of my answer, and that answer is this, Jesus Christ. Now, before you write me off as a heretic and turn off this video, let me just explain to you what I mean. The Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, let me read it for us right now. He says this, For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, let me explain this with a comment that I have written down in my Bible here. It's just a profound thought to consider. Christ, he becomes sin. He cannot be separated from sin. He becomes so exclusively associated with sin that it loses its sense for everyone else. Think about that for a moment. Christ takes the sin of humanity to be made sin on our behalf so that he is identified with sin, that indeed, so that he is smitten for our sin, so that we might not be smitten for our sin, but have the righteousness of God. Martin Luther comments on this on a most profound commentary. He says this, he says, whenever you feel remorse for your conscience on account of sin, look to Christ on the cross. Against your sin, which accuses and devours, you will find there another sin. But this other sin, namely that which is in the flesh of Christ, takes away the sin of the world, it is omnipotent, and it damns and devours your sin. Lest your sin accuse and damn you, it is itself damned by Christ. That is, by Christ the crucified, who for our sake was made to be sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Thus in your flesh you find a death that afflicts and kills, but you also have a contrary death, which is the death of your death, and which crucifies and devours your death. All these things happen not through the law or works, but through Christ, Christ the crucified, on whose shoulders lie all the evils of the human race, the law, sin, death, and the devil, and hell, all which die in him, because by his death he kills them. Oh, that's just such good gospel news for us this week, especially for Good Friday understanding that the end of death is in the death of Christ and in Christ not only do you have the end of your death eternal death itself but in that Christ as we journey to that resurrection that that tomb is rolled away to show and to reveal to us that he is risen that our Christ is risen and he's at the right hand of the Father and as Christ says we too will be risen someday from the dead unto Christ for everlasting life so Lord bless you my friends this holy week as we go through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then to Sunday, that resurrection, resurrection tomb, that Christ is our Lord, who is our death and our resurrection. God be praised.